So nine months ago, I had my first ever trip to Japan and I instantly fell in love with the country. I mean, the people, the culture, the technology and the history all intertwined. It just amazed me um, how it could be so rich and proud of its heritage, but still so advanced in terms of technology. Um, how people are very polite and respectful and helpful. So I really, really liked how it was. And so here I am today making my way to Fukuoka and then going to, I think it's six different city, cities, including Tokyo, which would be my end point. Um, I'm going to be vlogging the whole time that I am doing this. This is also going to be my first ever solo trip. Um, when I went to Japan nine months ago, I actually met up with a friend over there. And so it wasn't entirely solo. Only half of the trip was solo. But this time around, it's just really going to be me. So I'll be in Fukuoka, Hiroshima, uh, Osaka, Kyoto, and then Tokyo. But from Tokyo, I will be um, taking day trips to Nagano, possibly Nikko, and uh, obviously Mount Fuji. So yeah, watch out for that. In the meantime, I am actually here in Hong Kong at the Hong Kong airport because there's no direct flight from Sydney to Fukuoka. So I, I've had to take a flight that had a layover here in Hong Kong. I'll be here for about three hours um, before my next flight, which lands me in Fukuoka. Um, and well, Hong Kong airport isn't a bad place to have a layover. Um, I've even got my phone charging here uh, and they've got like not just a regular USB but a USB-C port. Talk about uh, first world, <laughs> right? So and I must apologize if I look like this uh, on the video because I haven't had any sleep. I just got off an eight and a half hour flight from Sydney to Hong Kong and yeah I haven't had much sleep on the plane, uh, mainly because somebody kept farting and it just was rancid and I couldn't sleep. I'm also quite light sensitive, so every time like a screen of a nearby seat would turn on or somebody would turn on their lights to read, I would wake up. So I apologize in advance for um, how I look right now. Um, I'm hoping I can freshen up soon when I get to Japan and um, vlog from there. So, see you then. I keep forgetting how expensive airport food in general is. Um, so I'm at the Blue Bottle and I ordered an oat milk latte and it cost me 50 Hong Kong dollars which in Australian dollar is roughly about $9.35. I would never pay $9.35 for a cup of coffee um, even if it's a different type of milk. This would usually be at most, what, $5, $5.50 in Australia. Yeah, that's that's a major rip off. This this coffee better taste like uh, it's made from the waters of the fountain of youth. <laughs> I guess that's that's just ridiculous, man. I think you're paying for the brand.
it's okay, but it's not earth-shattering, life-changing kind of coffee. Notice how the bags are laid that the handles are facing outward so that it's easy for the passengers to actually take them from the conveyor belt. That is Japanese attention to detail. Now the next thing that I need to do is exchange my JR Pass exchange order um, and change it to the actual JR Pass so that I can use public transport. Let's go and find the JR uh, office. Actually get my eSIM loaded onto my phone. Okay, so if you are intending to use the subway um, when you arrive in Fukuoka, you'll need to take the shuttle bus to the domestic airport um, and that would link to the subway station, which is just right there, okay? Okay, so I'm out of Hakata Station and I am heading to my hotel. Now, I did manage to get my JR Pass converted to, uh, from the exchange order to the actual pass. Uh, okay, here we are. This is where we are going to be staying for tonight.